Greetings and welcome back. Today I am again joined by the legendary and based mofo General Chief, who has volunteered very generously his time to talk about a subject that is near and dear to him, that is the details of complexity science. Now I have uh, had a discussion in the past about com complex systems. Uh, I expect that there might be some uh, overlap, but I think we're going to be spending mo more time talking about the uh, methodological changes that have occurred in uh, science upon, you could say, discovering com complexity within science, which uh, I suppose in the simplest of terms is the difference between what had previous been a, previously been a linear reductionist approach to understanding how the world works uh, from a scientific framework to, uh, well, as the name implies, a more complex interwoven interlocking system. And uh, General Chief has uh, volunteered his time as a person who's knowledgeable about this and as a practicing scientist himself, who is also sober at the moment. So uh, we're going to take advantage of that. So I guess the, I mean, I did sort of describe it, but how would you as a person interested, as a scientist, describe complexity science? Sure, yeah. So <clears throat> when it comes to uh, complexity, you can differentiate it from something that is complicated. So complexity and complicatedness, these are actually very different terms. A lot of people, uh, they use them interchangeably, but uh, complicated comes from the Latin root word plec, which means to fold. Uh, meanwhile, complex comes from the Latin root word, the Latin root word of plex, which means to weave. Uh, so, <clears throat> if if something is is complicated, it, it's difficult. There's there's a lot of uh, say parts to it uh, that you need to understand. But all of the parts are acting in a linear fashion. So, for instance, a, a car is complicated. Uh, it it may be difficult to <clears throat> know all of the parts in it, uh, know what their function is, what we've named all those things. Uh, I myself don't know anything about cars, uh, but they seem pretty complicated. Uh, <clears throat> but that's, that's what, that's what a, a complicated system is. But at, at the end of the day, the car is, is reducible. It is completely possible to understand all the parts of the car, understand how they function, uh, how they interact with one another. Uh, and, you know, given enough study time, you can reduce it down. It is reducible. A complex system is completely different. Uh, it is something uh, that is kind of woven together. So there's a lot of interacting parts to it. Uh, and because all the parts are interacting with one another uh, in a nonlinear fashion, it becomes very difficult uh, to break it down and, and try to reduce it uh, whatsoever. So, for instance, a, a, an example of a complex system might be, uh, say, the world economy or, say, the brain. Um, in the world economy, you have, uh, you know, uh, billions of people interacting uh, with one another, uh, you know, by exchanging uh, money, essentially. Uh, and the way that they exchange money, all the variables that happen, uh, the fact that you know any person in that system can theoretically interact with any other person in that system, it becomes very complex, and you can't just, uh, say, reduce it down by studying it uh, a lot. Uh, the same thing is, is with the brain. Um, the brain is composed of uh, 100 uh, billion neurons that are all interacting with one another, and there's no way that you can, say, just study one neuron and understand how the brain is operating. Uh, so that's, that's, that would be my, my overview of, of the difference between complexity and just complicatedness. Hmm. And, I mean, would you say that within the, the context of complexity science that there's still room for a linear reductionist approach? Because if you're looking at a I guess a more closed system and they do exist then that still might be a useful uh, tool uh, or methodology would it not be um yeah so I was uh, I was I was gonna talk about this a bit later but we can we can absolutely no, talk well about it we can yeah I mean whatever however you, yeah. you designate it uh, to, you know. um no so uh, 
for instance, like I, I study biology. Um, biology is, is uh, in essence, trying to go, uh, trying to tackle a complex system in a linear reductionist fashion. Uh, and it, it, it works, or it, it can work, and, and you can get uh, some pretty good results from it. Uh, but it is uh, necessarily limited. Um, uh, the the more complex a, a system becomes, the the less uh, viable uh, it it is to just study it from a from a purely reductionist perspective. Uh, and and it's it 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 can become yeah it, it can become very difficult. Uh, but it is possible um, to to do that. Hmm. And because. I think it's easy to get the impression that um, the older, more linear approach has been completely invalidated, which isn't the case. No, no, it's it's not. Um, it can still be used, but it's uh, uh, it's it, there. There are definitely limitations, uh, and the the limitations are co are kind of encoded into. Uh, the science itself. So, um, what we're talking about here is actually, you know, if you want to study complex systems, uh, you're talking about something that is post-science, essentially. Uh, <clears throat> so, the scientific method uh, essentially uh, lays out that you uh, have an independent variable, uh, a dependent variable, and then you, uh, you know, you you change the independent variable. You make an observation on the effects of the dependent variable. You uh, try to make sure that you can reproduce it, um, <clears throat> and and this this is how you study you know a system. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, in essence a, a linear approach uh, to understanding things. It is uh, specifically reductionist, uh, and for systems that are complex, uh, this does have have uh, you know it. It, 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 it's not it's not exactly a, a perfect way to, to go about things so um, I in in my uh, I guess understanding or perhaps even gut feeling it seems like the way to understand complex systems is something that is is post science you're talking about simulation essentially um, like I, I kind of have this uh, this idea that you know uh, <clears throat> everything started out with with religion and then we moved to philosophy and then we moved to science and then well what what comes after science uh well i think that it's actually it's going to be simulation so that's uh yeah that's my thinking on that so 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 po postulated sim so simulations that are based on postulations that um or postulates that cannot be conducted in you know say real time yeah, exactly. So, um, for for instance, uh, this is this is a very simple example, but I think that it it can convey the idea fairly well. Uh, there's a guy uh, by the name of Stephen Wolfram. Uh, he made a, uh, some people may be aware of the website uh, Wolfram Alpha, <clears throat> and he spent uh, some time, actually, I think quite a few years. Uh, uh, Working with elementary cellular automata, uh, so uh, basically, this is just it's uh, it's 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 a one-dimensional cellular automata uh, that um, where uh, it it goes uh, where, where the the time dimension is is the second dimension here. So you, so you basically have have a line of just zeros and ones, and. And then the next line under that line of zeros and ones uh, is determined by some sort of rule. So, uh, for instance, um, let's say you have a one, a zero, and a zero. Uh, on the next line, the one, uh, the on the next line, uh, the next, uh, I guess, zero or one will be determined on those three parents. So, if it's a one, a zero, and a one. It might, you know, that might become a one. If it's a one, a zero, and a zero, that might become a zero. Who knows? I mean, the, the rule is, uh, it can it can change. <clears throat> but um, what what Stephen Wolfram did was was he he looked at all the uh, possible rules that you could have, and I, I believe it's uh, two hundred and fifty six uh, possible ones. Um, I think that there's some uh, trivial replicates there, 
but what that results in uh, is actually some some really uh, interesting emergent phenomenon. Uh, <clears throat> so, for instance, you can have uh, Rule 12, uh, which actually uh, ends up not really resulting in, in anything. It's just a series of lines. Um, you can have uh, Rule 30, which is actually very interesting. It uh, it creates kind of a, a series of, of triangles, and they're all kind of... Uh, all over the place. It, it, I mean, it looks like like a chaotic system. Uh, and then uh, my personal favorite, and I think the one that's most interesting, is uh, <clears throat> Rule One Ten. So with Rule One Ten, it's uh, <clears throat> it's it's not uh, just a, a recurring pattern. Uh, it's not just like zero one zero one zero one, uh, and it's not super chaotic uh, like Rule Thirty. It actually has both. An order and a chaos to it, and uh, in Rule 110, uh, this actually produces uh, things that essentially act as as particles, uh, which is which is really cool. And in fact, um, someone was able to uh, by by properly <clears throat> encoding the starting conditions in Rule 110, uh, they were able to actually create a, a Turing complete computer, uh, uh, you know, using this. Uh, uh, elementary cellular automata, which is just super cool uh, to me. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, sorry, I, I forgot your question. Actually, I was I was going on a on a, s a slight uh, diatribe there. Uh, well, I mean, we, well, it was part. I guess your answer was part of the broader answer uh, to the question of uh, reductionism and, and linearity uh, in science the and I think you were offering basically a descriptive mo simulations we're talking about simulations oh yeah yeah as, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> as a a new model because uh, if you have a po some a postulate or, or some idea that cannot be uh, carry it out in real time, then that seems to be the option that is left. I imagine also for re simple reasons of ethical concerns. You know, maybe you could, maybe is I'm just throwing this out there as a hypothetical. You could find out something about neurons and axons if you split somebody's head open and messed around with them. But yeah, you know, ethical concerns obviously would way heavily there and you probably wouldn't be able to do that and then you'd be forced to engage in simulation as opposed to just you know cutting stuff up and messing a person's head up right yeah yeah um <clears throat> absolutely yeah the so the the reason that i brought up the uh the cellular automata uh, right was actually because of uh the the simulation idea so um with the uh with with the cellular automata there is no way to there's no like like mathematical way to predict uh, how they're going to evolve, uh, especially with with the <clears throat> say rule thirty and rule one ten, you have to run a simulation. Uh, it would be um, it kind of uh, uh, preposterous to just you know if if you were to take the scientific method and you were to just run the system and then you were to like you know change an independent variable and then try to measure the dependent variable, uh, <clears throat> it, what you would <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it would be it would be impossible uh, to to actually learn anything about the system given that uh, you know so <clears throat> you could have a starting condition of like zero one 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 zero <clears throat> and then you have you know you could change it and you could have a starting condition of zero one zero one zero <clears throat> and then you you know you would try to like uh, measure the differences at, at the fiftieth line uh, <clears throat> but that is uh, it, that's that's just going to be a terrible way about uh, you know understanding how the system works. In fact, <clears throat> the best way to do it is to just uh, run the simulation, and and, and that's it. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that, that when it comes to simulation, um, it has a lot of benefits outside of just linear reductionist science. Uh, and like what you were talking about with the human brain, um, yeah, it, I, I don't think that we're ever going to be able to understand the human brain from, you know, just a pure... Uh, you know, uh, standpoint of, of science of just pure biology. Uh, it just it's too complex, uh, and and yeah, I, I think that you will need to uh, run a simulation 
in order to kind of get a better understanding of <clears throat> how this system is working. And um, actually, there's a lot of people that are working on this right now. Uh, IBM Watson's, uh, or yeah, I, IBM IBM's Watson. Uh, that was the system that beat Ken Jennings at Jeopardy. Um, I believe that is a, a neural net. Uh, and I think that there was uh, pretty recently, maybe just a few months ago, there was uh, an AI that they built another neural net uh, that was able to beat the highest ranked Go player. Um, and it was, uh, and it, it it only had like 12 hours or 24 hours to learn how to play Go and it was able to beat the world uh, champion of Go. Um, so there, there is a lot of interest in actually uh, uh, simulation of, of neural networks uh, because you can have some direct application something that is uh, that has utility in the in the real world mm. but again it seems less to be a complete replacement for science and more a uh, say a partner or so something that uh, you can use in addition to the traditional methodology um yeah uh, I think that's fair you have, I mean, it's different tools for different systems. Uh, you wouldn't use, well, I don't know. Um, I guess I guess it's kind of like the division between science and philosophy. I mean, you wouldn't use science to determine, you know, what ought to be or what should be or anything like that. Uh, but you could, in you know, you could use philosophy to do so. Uh, and with simulation, I mean... <clears throat> You, you would probably use that uh, to study things that are complex as opposed to complicated. So, yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah. You know, one thing I've been thinking about with regards to complex systems and complex science would be, uh, well, we've seen a uh, in decade the past couple of decades a takeover of science by, you could say, the left. I, I'm kind of tired of saying that left, but whatever. It is kind of the left. Uh, and one thing that left tends to do is they like to obfuscate. And I'm thinking, one thing I've been thinking about is if in the future uh, the left would not uh, try to take advantage of the nonlinear uh, methodology and, and, and obfuscate to the point of trying to claim that we simply can't, you know, the left loves to say that we can't really understand anything, uh, or at least that's the implication of what they often uh, say. I'm wondering if, what you think about that, if, if going forward with this new, potentially new model uh, of explanation, uh, if, uh, if politics might get involved when we're trying to explore issues which are, uh, which tend to uh, rouse the ire of people, like intelligence or differences between people and things like that. If uh, the left might say, well, you know, complexity science uh, states that everything is nonlinear and non you know, Obviously, I'm, it's a parody, but I could, I could see something like that happening, and so I was wondering what you might think about that. Well, I mean, yeah, they, they theoretically could, could say anything. Um. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, the the left definitely has some sacred cows that they don't want touched, uh, and they could try to say, oh well, you know, complexity theory states that, you know, it's it's too complex. But uh, actually, I think that the complexity science uh, is the is the inverse of that. It actually it gives you a mechanism of of studying a complex system that, you know, using the traditional uh, scientific method, it, it would be too complex to touch. But, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, a greater understanding of things, a new understanding of things, actually, you, you could tackle some of those things. Uh, so, they, I mean, I, I could Im Im imagine a world where actually the, the left would be anti-complexity science because, um, you know, you could start uh, uh, running simulations and really trying to determine, uh, you know, certain social factors that, uh, uh, again, is, is one of their sacred cows and they, they don't want it to be prodded or poked. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's my one concern I have going forward. Um, to keep seems to be difficult. Keep politics out of out of science. Um, but 
as we move move forward, I, I get the distinct impression that's probably not going to happen. And uh, whatever the the science is uh, telling us that the left will want to uh, control the narrative because of those sacred cows. Oh yeah, no the um uh I- at least uh, in my experience with science, uh, just about everyone is is left leaning. Uh, it's <laughs> no, it's 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 very uh, uh it's it it's, seems it's like a, a parody. Little... Is that actually true? No, it's it's absolutely true. I mean, uh, it's just it, it's kind of expected that you're going to be left leaning. Uh, so that like it, to be in this in the in the center uh, is to be pretty much on the left uh, in terms of like you know scientific, uh, at least in in my experience with uh, with say laboratories. Uh, yeah, you mean to I, be in the center of sort of in the action. You mean with, with the. Or yeah, in, 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 in the context of a laboratory, to be right. in the center politically means that you're definitely on the left. Right. Uh, and and that, that makes it uh, very uh, strange to be, say, center-right, because you, you know, so you, you can be someone who's center-right, and then, oh, you seem far-right in comparison to everyone else around you. It's, uh, so do you, do you hide your political beliefs, then? <clears throat> um, there's a few people. Uh, that I might talk to, but for the most part, yeah, it's not something you, I really discuss. Do you pretend to be the other? What do you say? Uh, no. If it's if someone asks, I'll I'll be honest. I I don't think that uh, there's anything that I about my my political beliefs that I wouldn't you know defend. Uh, like I I think that most of my positions are defensible, and so I I have faith in them. Uh, but no, I mean it, it it usually doesn't come up that much. Um. I think it's it's just kind of expected that that you're on the left. I've uh, uh, I've gotten into two like there there are two people that I've really hashed out politics with uh, who are currently uh, where I currently work, and um, uh, you know they're they're really smart people, uh, but it's just it's interesting how sometimes they think because it definitely has a left leaning bias. Uh, I was talking with with one girl. Uh, <clears throat> this was. This was a while ago. This must have been, must have been more than a year ago. But uh, there was some some drama happening online in regards to I believe it was Miley Cyrus uh, doing uh, like twerking, right? Uh, a, a twerking is, is where you you know sh- shake your ass. I'm I'm uh, familiar. I think we know what twerking is. Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> there was some drama online about how Miley Cyrus should not twerk because that's a a black person only thing, I guess. <clears throat> and I, I brought this up to uh, uh, to, the, to this girl that I that I work with, and 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 I, I I asked her what she thought about that, and and she said, yeah, that that makes complete sense. Of course, Miley Cyrus shouldn't twerk. That's a black people thing. Uh, and, it's, uh, and you know, I I asked her, you know, well, uh, so so you're saying that that all black people own twerking, you know. That perhaps only the, you know the original black person that that invented twerking should own it. Why is it that all black people collectively own it? And she said, "Well, yeah, she she kind of deflected the point." Um, but yeah, it's 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 interesting because you you have people that are really really smart in one area, and then outside of that area, they just they don't seem to know what they're talking about. Well, I I, I guess that's more compartmentalization. I'm curious though, what what do you think seems to be the uh the major factor in, in most scientists uh, leaning uh, left, at least the ones that are willing to profess their political beliefs? I, I don't think that most uh, of the people w- focus on politics or even really want to understand it. I think that it's just kind of generally accepted that the, the correct position is on the left. And, you know, just... Take that one, and you're fine. You don't have to think about it too much. Uh, right. So it's more about just conforming to a system that will make your life easier. Because if you just pay lip service to whatever the uh, the sacred cows are, then you'll be okay. Yeah. I. I mean, obviously, there are some uh, people in science that are uh, very, you know, politically passionate. Uh, mm-hmm. That you know, and and they they might um, have a pretty good idea of what they're they're talking about. But yeah. I, it, like you said, I think that for the most part, uh, it's just, you know, they don't want to think about politics too much. And if politics does come up, it's left is the correct answer. And there you go. Hmm. 
Yeah, and then I've noticed that there there definitely have been some good scientists who still seem to spin a somewhat political agenda. So have you heard of Robert Sapolsky? He's a uh, neuroscientist and a biologist and. Uh, uh no he, he he's done some pretty important work on stress uh through observation of baboon tr troops and the recent book behave where he goes into some pretty extreme detail on the origins of human behavior and you know he goes i mean he basically uses this this argument of uh i guess long chains of causality you know you're more than just your genes or there are the epigenetics and then there's uh, prenatal stuff, and then there's uh, your ancestors, and then there's all this other stuff. Um, to well, it's 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 weird. It's it's almost like a kind of reverse order way of getting into a blank slate, which is a very left wing position. And so every time I hear him talk about this stuff, it sounds as if we we, we have all these uh, causes, multifactorial causes. Therefore, you're just this thing, and it you can be anything you want kind of thing and i was just curious uh, at the ground level but he's he's a stanford professor and and so it makes sense <coughs> that he would have a a left-leaning position there um on the ground it seems to be much more of a pragmatic decision to sort of keep people uh, or off your back uh, well you know it's it's interesting that you mentioned that because for the life of me i don't understand why it is that biology is uh, it tends to have left-leaning people uh, as, as far as I can tell um, just the the notion of uh, human biodiversity is is at least currently in the Overton window a right-leaning position I guess to acknowledge that uh, what to acknowledge that there are some population differences yeah yeah um, as, as far as I can tell at least you know again given the Overton window that seems to be on the right mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and uh, for the life of me, I don't understand why it is that uh, a lot of like people that are involved with with biology and understand biology, why it is that they aren't themselves on the right. I mean, it's uh, it's isn't it's, that a problem generally? I mean, my big issue. I was going to make a separate video about this, but I might as well just here is that I, I think that science, <clears throat> in as much as it's observation of, of data it really doesn't have a right or left thing you could say for well you could say that observing population differences is something that is more likely to occur out loud in right-wing circles in fact uh, your favorite group of people the alt-right that's their favorite topic <laughs> I, I would like to state I am not myself alt-right <laughs> I'm actually one of those uh, uh, liberalists uh, TM uh, I thought you were a libert, uh, dude, let's, don't do your trolley thing here, man, please. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but, but yeah, so you could say that one group of people are more likely to talk about it, but I don't, that doesn't, to me at least, make that knowledge necessarily the province of a particular political polarity, uh, because it's not, there's, I mean, you could, I don't even know if there are necessarily political implications to it. That's debatable. That's a separate no, discussion. It's just that no, no. I, the the science itself uh, is not is not political. Um, yeah. But it is like uh, so. Um, you 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 could you could study anything within the bounds of science uh, that that you wanted to. Uh, it's just that, and, and it's it's not inherently political. It's just that. Uh, only certain people will study certain things, uh, and that may be due to political motivation. Uh, so, what actually gets researched in science may be due to, uh, you know, whatever bias a person has. So, for instance, um, you know, okay, uh, HBD seems to be uh, currently, at least, more of a right-leaning thing. Meanwhile, uh, climate change is definitely more of a left-leaning thing. And in I, in I think terms it, of the the people who are who would want to pursue those, uh, yes, those avenues, yeah, 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 I'd agree with that. Um, yeah, and and so you know, it's it's just a uh, so there there are people that uh, that just they won't want to know or acknowledge uh, certain aspects of science because it, it disagrees with their worldview. Um, so, uh, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, an expert on client uh, on climate change, but you know, there are certain people that, you know, just right off the bat, uh, without really any evidence, they're like, yeah, okay, I accept that climate change is a thing. Or uh, there are people that right off the bat, even if if they're given lots of evidence, they say no, it's all fake. Uh, and you know, so, and you you could say the, the same thing with with HBD. I mean, um, so science itself is not inherently political, but it is very easily politicized. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a, a mistake because I'm going to take take the uh, the the HPD obsession uh, from political angle as it seems to be primarily the province of the of the right, and I think at this stage it's indeterminable because of lack of research and we go into the reasons why. Uh, just how impactful that is in the long term uh, as far as social policy is concerned all these other things. I think you could say there's some impact, but it's just not exactly clear which one uh, or, or the degree of that impact, what the degree of the Im impact is. But because it, the, the, the topic has been completely uh, devoured by the right and nobody on the left with a, will touch it with a 10-foot pole um, for fear of certain conclusions which may or may not be the actual conclusions uh, that you would have to reach um, there's only one side talking about it and so it's you know speaking of uh, political bias I and I like you would acknowledge it's obvious that you know there, there are people I mean I, I always use the analogy you can go out on the street in any major city and you'll see some people who are tall, with green eyes, brown eyes, blue eyes, no hair, some, you know, it's, people are obviously different. It's fucking obvious. Um, and then you can see overall trends in different populations uh, and say, well, they're different. And so there's no reason to assume that people are the same. Uh, it's just that the degree to which that is impactful is it, it's difficult, I think, to ascertain at this stage. Uh, and it has some impact. It's just how much? How much is the impact? But now that because it, this seems to be more of a right thing, specifically an alt right thing, uh, well, you only have one group of people talking about it, and let's be honest, they have an agenda. Whereas yeah. if the left were to take hold of this, they would have their agenda too, which is always to debunk this stuff. Now I was um, I was discussing earlier with uh, some some colleagues, you could say, uh, earlier today after you left, some discussion that alternative hypothesis and, and his, co his colleague had with some other person. And oh, is this the uh, the Worski debate? I, perhaps it was. I don't yeah. pay attention to the blood sport mu much, but I what I, I did think. Wait, there is, was some is, the, is this not blood sports right now? What we're no, we're having a discussion. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Right. You, you are sober, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> why do you Why do you ask that? I'm just curious. So, uh, what I thought was salient about that was that um, you get these people entering these debates with with alternative hypothesis, and it's it al it's always these people that deny outright deny any sort of HBD, which is a really bad approach because you'll always lose. It's like denying. It's like like denying that fuck that dogs are mammals or cats are mammals. It, it's you're just going to lose if you say that uh, cats are reptiles. I mean, you're going to lose because it's just not true. There's no evidence for that, etc. Um, but if the left really and you know, I'm I'm pretty kind of much in the middle. I don't really align myself with either side. But if the left wanted to actually address these issues, what they would have to do is accept the reality of HPD and then try to figure out how consequential it is. Because the default position from an alternative hypothesis is, and I think this, at this stage it's not clear, actually, but is that you know, HPD is real, race, whatever that means, I, I like population, it's more accurate, but you know, race is quote unquote real, and it's the most important thing out there. Uh, if he's the only one actually talking about that, that statement will go uncontested. And if you're on the left and you're saying, well, uh, it doesn't exist. You're not in a position to dispute the uh, the degree of impact. And I think that's if you actually wanted to counter the people on the right who have an agenda, who are interested in HBD, that's the approach you'd have to take. As someone who's, well, frankly speaking, in the middle, who is just unsure what the degree of impact that might be, 
is, uh, you know, if I were trying to counterpunch, as it were, the right, well, that's what I would do, rather than saying cats are reptiles. It's pointless. You're <laughs> going to lose. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, uh, that's that's a good point that you make. The uh, it's it's the alt right currently talking about it. Mm -hmm. Uh. And that's 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 a huge problem um, because yeah, like you said, they have an agenda, uh, and I, I personally am not someone who uh, has has the same I guess political aspirations as the alt right does. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to uh, say uh, you know discuss you know HBD uh, with them, that's fine, uh, and and you know it it all seems pretty sound. But then the implications are, are that's that's where I guess we would go our separate ways. Uh, I don't, you know, and and it, if you know, I'm thinking about it now, and you know, if the left were to openly acknowledge uh, HBD, I'm not sure what they would do would do with that. I mean, uh, their blank slate tabula rasa idea of everything would have to go out the window, uh, and that's a sacred cow of theirs uh, that you know definitely would not want to touch that, but. You know, if if they did fully acknowledge that, I mean, I can imagine them uh, implementing some system where, you know, you you get welfare that is proportionate to like how bad your genes are or how good your genes are. <laughs> right. I, like, you know, because um, because it, it would just go back to making sure that everyone is equal, making sure that the outcomes are equal, and then you know, when it comes to you know the far right or the alt right. You know, it's 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 the opposite. It's that okay. Well, if you have good genes, or not even good genes, if if you have the the quote unquote correct genes, uh, then you can stay in our ethno state. And and if if you don't, then you know you're kicked out. I I am not personally in favor of either of these uh, prospects. Uh, mm, neither am I. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's 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 too. It, it is too bad that uh, you know just just people in the center aren't willing to. Uh, acknowledge this type of stuff it's well i think they are everyone i well i don't know i'm i don't i'd like to say i wouldn't say i'm right or left I'm somewhere in the center just because i don't like really what the right or the left stand for but i would say that um so for example my own view at the moment is that the uh the consequences of population differences would fall within a, a broader range of consequences of behaviors that afflict all kinds of individuals. For example, I think the big issue in the future is the sort of cognitive d divide between the haves and have-nots. You know, basically, for lack of a better term, the big brain nibbas versus the people that just they're never going to get this stuff. And of course, there'll be some populations that are more isolated from uh, the sort of cognitive haves. But at the end of the day, it's just a, a question of who has that cognitive capacity or not. Likewise, with certain types of behavior, um, you could frame that along a racial issue if you wanted to, like people like Ryan Falk and, I mean, the alt-right in general do. Um, but I, I don't really, I don't see this as, as, as necessarily a racial issue as much as it is um, a question of distribution of, of different uh, cognitive capacities, which then, you know, that, that's an overarching problem that will affect gr groups of people within groups. Um, why bother uh, focusing on specific groups that might, proportionally speaking, have uh, different degrees of, say, G-loadedness? Or it, it's, I don't think it's terribly consequential. What's consequential here is that Society is increasingly becoming, you could say, intellectually stratified, and that's a bigger. Issue. That's my own view, at least at the moment. Um, but of course, you'd have to acknowledge, and I do, that there are, you know, mean differences in distribution of traits and heights and all kinds of things. Um, the question is, is how consequential that is. I'm not convinced it's as consequential as the alt right um, believes. There might, there, well, there would have to be some consequence. Obviously, I just don't know to what degree. The left won't touch it with a ten-foot pole, uh, and I'm, I'm honestly, and I think the problem with people in the center, myself included, is I just don't find it. I lack that ghoulish fascination, uh, if you want to call it that, or I'm just not. I'm not. Tr I mean, I'm not really trying to push a specific agenda in that direction, and I think 
the only way you would get an extreme view on that would be either you're the left and you say it doesn't exist or you're right and say race is everything which is you know something that i have heard them say um so i'm not i'm not really sure if you're in the center what you do with that because everyone i know in the center says oh yeah yeah there are are differences between people and then we just kind of get on with our day we don't spend a tremendous amount of time obsessing over it in my experience so yeah yeah i mean that's uh that's kind of the stance that I take. Um, you know, uh, if, if, if we agree, you know, on, on let's, let's say that we completely accept everything that, uh, Ryan Falk or alternative hypothesis says, Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, there, there are these big differences between race, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, I think that one thing that he really likes to harp on is, is IQ. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, well, let's, let's just accept that as, as being valid. Uh, in that case, all right. Uh, I'm fine with that. Let let the, let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I I don't like you know. Uh, I guess I guess one issue is that um, you know you you have uh, uh, at least in America uh, where I live, uh, you have kind of race based uh, quotas uh, that are at least in some parts uh, uh, federally uh, enforced. Uh, I think that this is uh, complete bullshit. Um, I, 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 I don't understand why it is that, say, uh, if you're Asian, uh, you have to get a, a very high SAT score to make it into a good college. But if you're a black person, you can get a just a middle-of-the-road SAT score, and then you can make it in the same college. It, it, depending on your race, there are different uh, quotas that you have to meet. Or not quotas. Uh, you have to reach different bars depending on your race. Um, to me, this is completely preposterous. Uh, li- like I was saying, if we just accept the Ryan Falk I- interpretation of things, then, all right, um, uh, what you'll have is a society where uh, Jews and Asians are are really high up there, whites are just below, and then blacks and Latinos are going to end up at, at the you know the lower parts of society. All right, fine. I, I I'm not necessarily concerned with that. I don't need I, I I don't need to care about race. I don't want to care about race. If it ends up that black people end up on the lowest rungs of society, I also don't care. Well, uh, there's a consequence of these absurd, I agree that these policies are absurd, is what you get is uh, a scenario where a person who is otherwise reasonably capable and could do quite well at, let's call it Institution X, is put in Institution Y. Um, so, for I mean, let me use more specific. Let's say that he Institution uh, X represents... Uh, I don't know, uh, people in the top 10% in terms of G-loadedness for whatever reason. And the person could do well and even excel in that situation. Um, but ch- ch- Institution Y represents the people who are top 1% G-loadedness, and he's gonna he's just someone won't be able to keep up. So he ends up getting, well, psychologically damaged because he feels like an idiot even though he's probably in the top 10% in the country yeah. regardless yeah. of his race or whatever. And it just skews everything. So I, I think it's, I've never been a fan of affirmative action, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, it's that issue. I mean, I suppose if I were to play devil's advocate uh, and pretend I'm on the alt-right, uh, it, it, I would argue that it's also uh, <clears throat> a matter of people, uh, people's tribal interests and that uh, even if that hierarchy uh, turned out to be true, then uh, people would show tribal allegiance and try to, you know, exclude other people, uh, etc. Um, but pff, I don't really know how you could control for that. And incidentally, the the these sort of SAT standards or te- or university standards in general uh, but tacitly imply that the left acknowledges that overall there are uh, differences in mean outcome uh, across populations. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there in the first place. Um, what, even, even if they were entirely uh, caused by environment, which is not something I believe, but um, they still acknowledge that there, there's some difference. Otherwise, they wouldn't have these policies in place. But yeah, I, I'm more of a fan of let the chips fall uh, where they may. In fact, I've told alt-righters uh, that, you know, I... I I is, is it's technically legal, but if they wanted to, you know, balkanize and you know have some state or some area in a state that's all you know some white ethno state, I don't really that wouldn't bother me if they wanted to do that. I'm a bit libertarian on that front. I just I don't really care what people do as long as they're not 
uh, interfering with me and, and other people too much. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I was, I was talking with someone on the right that uh, they wanted to set up an ethno state um, and in, in Antarctica. And uh, I, I said that, you know, that's that's fine. I, I don't care if you want to do that. If you want to set up your own place where it's it's only white people, uh, you, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but I think that in nations that are already established, uh, taking away, you know, citizenship from someone uh, by force, that just, it, that doesn't seem appealing. The things you wouldn't even need to do that. You get some, you could get a, in theory, if you want, people really wanted to do this, an exodus of quote unquote white people, uh, what, however you want to define that, uh, to go to majority white states or whatever, they can you know found communities, build towns, they could live out their dream if they wanted to. Uh, but in my experience talking with people in the alt right, the impression I get is it's sort of an all or nothing deal. So they want to go back to the uh, you know the great. Northwestern Anglo tradition that still existed sometime in the in the nineteenth century. And I said, well, you know, those days are done. But what here's what you still could do. You know, go out to Wyoming, uh, found a town, create create a city. Uh, you know, uh, make it. And you wouldn't even need to be if you didn't want people who weren't white there. Uh, you obviously probably difficult federally to make it illegal, but you could make it so uncomfortable that de facto no one who who wasn't white would want to go there, right? So. And you could do that, you know, people do. Oh, you could, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's And I, not, I, yeah. I would personally have no issues with doing that. You know, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. But it, it seems that a lot of them have this all-or-nothing attitude. But I, I do think that long-term, uh, if the left uh, continue to avoid uh, poking the dragon, they're going to lose. Because, again... If you don't acknowledge reality and you want to stick to some fantasy narrative, I, I, I don't see how you're going to win any argument. Uh, they might be afraid of the consequences, and I don't know. You know, I honestly, I don't think, based on the evidence I looked at, that race is everything. But like the alt right, or maybe hypothesis would say, but it, that's a possibility, I suppose. But then again, you need to explore the issue to begin with, and uh, I, I think. As is often the case, uh, you'd probably end up discovering that it's something, but it's not everything, and it's somewhere in between, and it's it's somewhat consequential, but it's also not uh, the end of the world. But as long as the left doesn't want to touch that at all, then I, I don't really see you're just going to get uh, a continual march uh, forward that will build, strengthen uh, the right, and I don't really have a, a horse in this fight uh, as someone who's neither left nor right, but... Surely the left, if they actually wanted to do something, but what happened with the with the Kraut uh, and the, or rather the Urban Tea debacle was again approaching this from the point of outright denial. But again, calling cats reptiles—that's not helpful uh, to their cause. Um, and no. <clears throat> and then Sargon's another example who, who he might sort of acknowledge it very briefly for thirty seconds and just move on. And that's not going to help either. Well, well yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think that, yeah, Sargon has acknowledged that, you know, HPD is a thing, I think, in the past. Uh, but I, I don't think that he, he really wants to focus on that. And I, I think that uh, when it comes to... I think that that's, that just, that's a... That's, he, he's, he stands on, I guess, the principles of liberalism. And, and so... Uh, I guess that, you know, from his perspective, it doesn't make sense to uh, focus on, on, say, race. Uh, you know, it, let's say that, um, you know, like like 98% uh, uh, of Chinese people were, were uh, dirty thieves. Uh, uh, you know, then, you know, there's still the 2% that could be very good uh, and, and are not, you know, dirty thieves. So, uh, you know, it, it, I, I guess that from his perspective, you need to, you know, look at everyone as an individual and, you know, not look at their race. I think that that is his ideological framework. Um, yeah, and, and, and I, but again, if you don't, somebody is going to need to do the dirty work eventually of investigating this issue thoroughly. 
um, to come to uh, the conclusions that most line up with the evidence available. Um, I'm again. I, I feel that because I mean he doesn't like the term, but I mean, all hypothesis is basically the science man of the alt right. <laughs> That's what he is. And but but every he's the only one talking about this stuff. And um, I'm I'm cautious with his proclamations. But there's oh god, no, yeah he he, mm-hmm. he has a he has a statistic for everything. And yeah, I. I and oftentimes, it's, it doesn't seem like he necessarily has a source. He just says, hey, you know, there's a study that I read one time, and it says this. And Well, that, that seems to be a general trend of the alt-right. The other day, there was a uh, Confederate, interesting, Confederate alt-righter, a special variety. Wow, I haven't was, encountered that. Yeah, that was uh, citing some weird uh, stats, uh, and, and, and they were backed up... Uh, with oh it's just a fact <laughs> and I was supposed to just and I asked I asked if he could link some of the things he was claiming he said he would DM me but he, he never did so um, yeah I, yeah and I think that's that's a problem I I think you would again you need to feel some sort of strong political motivation to actually want to oppose that which could then potentially uh, lead you down the path of distortion yourself. I um I'm interested in HBD from a kind of more historical perspective, uh, but I'm not obsessed with it as a as a as a reason for stratifying society necessarily. Uh, so I I just don't I couldn't be bothered to 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 act as a counterpoint because it it's just well I don't first off I don't think I'm qualified but also it's just it's just not my realm of interest so I, I, I don't really know what the solution is there it's just that um, getting back to the topic of, of say complexity science I think HBD is one of those uh, complex topics that will require a lot of investigation to properly understand and oh yeah it's not going to be enough just to trot out a couple of so well stats it would be enough to you know get your audience on YouTube to to upvote you or whatever, fine, but that's not really the, uh, I think, long term, uh, the purpose of that. Uh, and I'm of the view that you know it's always best to deal with reality, so you, you kind of got to let the tri- chips fall where they may, whatever the outcome. I mean, to use your hyperbolic example <laughs> from before, if you know it turned out that Chinese people, ninety eight percent of Chinese people were dirty liars and. I guess you know you, you work with that, you accept it. I don't know, um, whatever that might, you know, whatever the consequence of that might be. <laughs> Obviously, you know, I don't actually believe that because I haven't seen evidence for it. But the point is, is that you got to work with whatever whatever t- turns out to be true. And at this state stage of the game, we just don't know all the details. Um, and what I see, the left is is saying there are no details. And there are many blanks, and what I see the right doing is they're filling in the blanks pretty much with what they want the blanks to be, and it's just not clear uh, if that's the best approach. That's my view, at least. Oh, yeah, and I would I would absolutely agree with that. Um, I think that, uh, <coughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what the right, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, is kind of doing with it. They uh, they're taking something that is hugely complex, something that no one really understands, and then. You know, they're they're actually they're taking a complex system and they're trying to make it just a complicated system. You know, to take it back to my original definitions, um, yeah. they're trying to make it just linear, straightforward. You know, this equals this. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I think that a lot of what they're they're essentially saying is uh, white equals good and smart, black equals bad and and dumb. Uh, and I, it's it's it is obviously uh, just a hugely complex system that no one understands. Uh, I, I am completely fine with you know further investigation into HBD. I think that it, it sh- you know it should be done. Um, I think it's uh, you know potentially interesting, um, but uh, yeah to 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 try to to try to reduce it down um, to like you know policies that a nation should have. Uh, I think that that's that's probably that's that well, might be going a step too far. On the matter of policy, I think that you know that. Uh, the, the collusion of politics and science can be uh, potentially dangerous. There's no doubt oh, yeah. about that. But 
There's, I mean, I don't know if you bothered watching. I had a talk with Wojak about sugar. Now, we understand pretty m well these days the interaction of, between our endocrinology and sugar. I'm pretty, I'm confident saying we could have a policy that would limit the intake of sugar and would be beneficial to the health of the nation. That's because we have enough data on the subject. But on, on, on these other matters, um, I think we need to be a lot more cautious um, <coughs> rather than just implementing policies on 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 supposition and, and and blanks that people are filling in with what they want to be true uh it's it's a bit risky but that's why i think hbd should be investigated uh, somebody needs to do it um and ideally you would want maybe the best way is get people from different political polls to have a whack at it so as to not get an overrepresentation of of one group that will inevitably be biased and then try to project these biases onto their own research and their endeavors. Uh, that's my idea, at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that I, I take, um, like like with, with just about, with most things, I take kind of a libertarian stance. Uh, so, uh, you know, when it comes to your, sugar, to your sugar example, I would be, you know, even if it would improve the health of, you know, the population to, you know, have some ban on sugar. Uh, I, I would just, I'm going to say no to that. Uh, I, I, I'm not really interested uh, in in having uh, lots of rules and laws and overregulation. Um, I'm not a, I'm not an ANCAP. I, I, I agree that government, should, you know, needs to exist. Uh, but you know, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm also not a big fan of overregulation and you know well, something like the nanny state. collusion between uh, the the sugar. And, I mean, it, it's. We already have a nanny state. It's just the the opposite type. It's just yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So no, I don't want to get too much into that topic. It's just I was only citing as an example where uh, there's enough uh, aggregated data to point to uh, a possible policy you could implement if you wanted to do that. If you wanted to have a hands-off approach, uh, that's fine. It's just that uh, you need to have enough information and evidence to, to implement uh, a policy. Uh, and if there are too many blanks, then uh, it's you have to be pretty cautious. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. Um, and what I was saying was that, uh, you know, let's, let's say, you know, with the sugar example, okay, it's bad. I would say, okay, well, we can't regulate it uh, or we shouldn't regulate it. Uh, even if it is bad, and I think that you know the race thing is kind of the, it, it's similar. Uh, let's let's say that we found out, um, you know X, Y, and Z about race. I am I would still not be in favor of having uh, you know any sort of government enforcement of of you know these statistical probabilities, uh, or or enforcement based off of these statistical probabilities. Uh, and you know I, I think that. Uh, it, to a certain extent, it it just comes down to um, uh, evolution, right? So, I mean, we're we're talking about HBD. This this all arose due to evolution. I mean, uh, you know, when when you try to when you try to fix a problem and and you don't let say evolution take care of it, it just it becomes worse. So, uh, you know, I, I I'm 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 not sure um, if there's been a study on this, but I would guess that. Uh, since the invention of glasses and, uh, you know, uh, corrective, uh, you know, a anything that's, you know, uh, corrective for eyesight, uh, there's probably been at least a slight uptick in the amount of people that need corrective uh, glasses for their eyesight uh, because people are no longer being selected for having good eyesight. They can get by perfectly fine with, you know, shit eyesight because they can just have glasses. Uh so you know, from my perspective, uh, you're you're just kind of making the problem worse by trying to enforce things. Like, you know, if if you just let everyone have as much sugar as they want, you know, certain people will get diabetic, they'll get fat, and they will die early and they won't reproduce. And the people that survive uh, will. All right. Now you're injecting your own personal philosophy into this, which is fine. <laughs> uh, look, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think most people would take issue with. I don't think evolution just solves all our problems. Uh, in fact, I'm of the view that if we let evolution solve our problems, there won't be any evolution in the future at all because of the uh, incredibly maladaptive environment we've created. Uh, yeah, I mean, in theory, uh, 
I mean, once again, if you want to be reductionist about it, yeah, you know, you let all the people who get diabetes die off. Hey, why have any? Just just let the big, tall, strong thug just beat everyone up and kill his opposite. I mean, you can. If you start arguing along these lines, you're going to get to the point, I think, of absurdity. But, yeah, I mean, in in theory, you might want to uh, look at that in a bit more nuanced way, unless you do favor the gigantic uh, thug uh, just killing off his opposition. As I understand, though, General, you're a lover, not a fighter, so... Uh, <laughs> that, uh, um, no, no, I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm not, I'm, well... You you say that I'm I'm trying to inject my uh my personal philosophy here, but I mean, come on, we, we it, both have our own personal. Well, that's true, uh, but it's 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 a it's a type of neo Darwinism, which is you know it's fine. It's just that. Well, but but also, I mean, what I would say is that I'm not necessarily in favor of say anarcho primitivism, where we just get rid of the government and we go back to living in nature. Uh, I I'm 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 a moderate when it comes to a lot of things. Uh, I am not in favor of. Uh, like I, I'm, I'm in favor of having a government, uh, you know, but I, I'm not in favor of a nanny state. And so, uh, I, I think that uh, to some extent, evolution can take care of of some things. Uh, it can't take care of everything, obviously. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a moderate when it comes to this. I'm, I'm not saying that we need to go back and live in nature, obviously. Okay, so. Uh, let the people die of diabetes, but don't let the uh, the giant kill everybody and establish his harem. Is basically what you're saying. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. I guess I don't want to sound like a, like Stefan Molyneux too much here, but I guess it would be the NAP. You know, you can choose to ingest tons of sugar, uh, and and you know that's your own personal choice. You're not harming anyone but yourself. I'm not in favor of say. Uh, well, you are harming kind of a here. healthcare system that will be overburdened long term by these practices. But unless, again, unless you, in the, unless in this model, people are just sort of dying out in the streets. I mean, they're they're just con- I think there are consequences from too much of a hands off approach. Um, but we're kind of rapidly uh, deviating from um, uh, the topic. But yeah, I would agree that in these matters of HBD that. Um, any type of interventionism, be it uh, ex- restrictionist policies or the kind of current, you could say, racialist policies enforced by the left of uh, strange quotas are not not very helpful uh, long term. In fact, it's it, it thinks it's more harmful, uh, as I cited earlier, you know, because you get people who are just not at the right institutions that are appropriate and uh that that's not good oh yeah yeah no the um uh it, it, to, to take it back to i guess what we were talking about a while ago yeah the uh uh of course the uh, affirmative action especially when it comes to colleges it uh it it hurts literally everyone um i guess it's supposed to it's supposed to help people but uh yeah even even the people um, that are supposed to be benefited uh, by it, they, they do. I, I think that they are, in general, hurt. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you can't, or you, you shouldn't, uh, <clears throat> I guess, enact those sort of policies because it leads to bad things. Yeah, and then there are people, who, the people themselves who, quote-unquote, benefit get hurt, and there are people who are capable but happen to be, you know, have, I mean, they're basically not melanated enough, and so they, they can't, go to university because they can't benefit from these policies even though they're at least as capable and if not more so in some cases so that that's a big mess um but well i think one thing that's interesting is i don't i don't really on the the topic of say affirmative action this doesn't even seem to be a, a point of debate at all anymore it seems that this is just an an, an assumed good and nobody at least in mainstream politics, one that wants to contest that. Uh, forget about you know the intimate details of HBD. I don't think I've haven't heard in a long time people even talk about in mainstream politics. That is about uh, affirmative action or whether or not that should be in place. It's just sort of that this is the way it is. And um, maybe we. And here's the thing that I find very interesting about this current obsession with identity politics that. Um, 
we've mo- we've moved into an era of uh, what I might argue is sort of, are sort of value based politics as opposed to policy based politics, and um, that's harmful because policy based politics would be, in theory, more reflective of of uh, almost a scientific way and approach to the world. You know, how is the world, and how do we interact with the world? Whereas the value based system is, you know, crime down somebody's throat whatever your personal preference is and and let's run with it and that's what we've had for decades with affirmative action uh i don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because they don't have much power but uh you know you could create i mean i'm sure the alt-right would want to create a a series of you know universities that have at best quotas on on non-whites or something like that which would be you know just a different version of that um, so, well, I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I'm not necessarily opposed to value-based politics because uh, if you look at the, uh, if you look at America, uh, the Constitution is a value-based politics. Uh, it is, it, it's completely based off of, I guess, uh, uh, the ideas of of the uh, of the Renaissance. Um, you know, uh, basically liberalism. Uh, it's it's kind of like a, a lot of what like John Locke was saying is basically the American Constitution. I mean, that is absolutely a value based system. Uh, but I I support those values. Uh, I, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily support other values like uh, like some sort of communist based system. I, I don't think that that value based is necessarily bad. I think it's it's good to stand on on certain principles. Hmm. Yeah. Well, absolutely. It's just that. Um, it, it, uh, value-based politics t- tends to be infused with uh, people's mm, very fickle desires rather than a hard examination of the hard evidence and uh, that can get us into trouble sometimes that's all I'm saying uh, especially in the current year uh, with how things are going but you know I, I yeah I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat still libertarian or sympathetic if, if people wanted to splinter off and do their own thing again if the alt-right wanted to create some sort of pseudo ethno state and whites only universities I, I really pff, couldn't really i don't care they could do that um they're black only universities so why not have white only universities i don't really i'm not bothered by either too much uh, well so. uh, you know um <coughs> I, I guess since we're we're on on the uh, kind of on this this topic, uh, you know, uh, I think I think I, I heard this from uh, some talk that Jordan Peterson gave, and I, I haven't uh, looked at it myself. Um, I'll just hope that Jordan Peterson is was was correct when he was saying this, but he said something like uh, he was like the U.S. military uh, won't take anyone that has like an IQ below 83 mm-hmm. uh, because they, they I guess they physically can't do anything productive that is actually that would be beneficial like they're yeah. they're they're incapable of that um, yeah. now so this heard that too yeah yeah I I, 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 actually, I have not looked it up I have no idea what the actual policies of the military Let's assume are it's true for the sake of argument yeah sure uh, so it to me uh, uh, this is this is currently a, a problem. I mean, if if the U.S. military doesn't want you, I mean, good God, what you know? How much impact are you capable of having in the economy? Uh, and you know, c- can you you know even really provide for yourself outside of a, a very simple minimum wage job? Uh, it, you know that that to me is is probably. Uh, it's it's an issue, and I think that it, it might explain why you know at least certain people are in poverty. Uh, but at the same time, I also uh, believe that this problem is going to get worse. Uh, so, uh, well, that's what I, I was talking about—the cognitive divide. Yeah. Well, it's you know there there probably I would I would be I am almost certain that in the future there's going to be an increase in the division between the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. Uh, but I think that. Another factor that's going to, you know, make this worse, that's going to in- intensify this problem, uh, and, you know, th- this, I, I don't, you know, th- this might be itself a very large discussion, and if, if you're not interested in getting into it, that's fine, but uh, what I would say is that uh, automation uh, is going to, uh, it's, 
it's going to make this problem a lot worse. Uh, oh, I agree. I've talked about this before on my channel. Yeah, yeah it, it will, um, because with automation, uh, even you know, big nibba brain jobs, relatively speaking, could easily be uh, replaced. It's a question of degree. Uh, fact is, uh, I, I, some of these sort of text-to-speech programs are improving. Somebody showed it me the other day that almost indistinguishable from real people. Uh, things are changing rapidly, and I don't know, well, I've been over this quite often on my channel, but I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but the cognitive divide is going to grow, and there'll be more and more uh, have-nots, and um, I guess if we were to use your uh, tactic, we could just let them, uh, I mean, die in the street, although I'm pretty sure there would be a pretty funky smell from all the corpses and what have you, <laughs> um, and that might be a problem, although... Yeah, I guess we could get robots to clean that up. Uh, but, yeah, this is, this is a problem. I think it's a bigger problem than um, a quote-unquote uh, race problem. Uh, but, again, nobody, nobody in the mainstream is really talking about that either. Nobody in the mainstream is talking, to, to my mind, nobody in the mainstream is talking about anything that's actually relevant. They're all, again, we can quibble about when values ba value based politics or is a useful thing and sometimes it is i suppose but if we're dealing with real world problems then there needs to be agreement that there is a problem to begin with and you know w then we can discuss what the solutions might be if there are any so yeah yeah it's um <laughs> yeah like like you said i i'm personally more concerned about the issue of automation than i am about uh you know race or whatever implications are there yeah. uh it's uh so it's like my, my thinking on the subject is that you have uh an upper bound uh to what humans are capable of uh clearly humans are not infinitely intelligent uh clearly you know uh m there is an upper bound for most people and then there's a maybe a higher upper bound for those that are really intelligent but there still is necessarily an upper bound for humanity uh and you know in terms of what they're capable of of doing uh, i guess work wise and <clears throat> the upper bound for uh i guess what algorithms and robots are capable of is still you know relatively low uh but it continues to increase uh year after year uh, the upper bound for humans <clears throat> is not increasing year over year. Uh, you know, if evolution is having some sort of you know force in that, uh, it's going to operate far too slowly uh, to, I guess, keep up with the year by year increase in the upper bound of what robots and algorithms are capable of. Uh, you could absolutely envision a future where that upper bound for the robots and algorithms uh, eclipses, uh, you know, the median thing that humans are capable of and even the highest thing that humans are capable of uh and at that point i'm not sure what to do because i i, I that's that that's that's going to be a tricky problem i'm not even uh trying to invoke like a super intelligent ai or the singularity or anything like that i'm just saying that you know work wise there will come a point where at least a well, lot of people correct i mean let's say a secretarial job you wouldn't need a super intelligent AI for that you would just need a, a competent uh, automated um, uh, deep learning program that can aggregate data and, and then integrate it into its workflow and you don't need exactly. humans anymore why, why bother yeah. you know yeah no I, I'm, I'm quite concerned about this too uh, and I think that it, it well, I don't should would is it should be the a, a much greater concern uh, to see and this is what I mean by these uh, these sort of polls uh, political polls interfering is that if we if we can acknowledge that this is potentially a very big problem then it doesn't matter what faction you belong to you should be concerned about it and you know have some some thoughts on it at the very least. Um, but the concern itself is, I wouldn't say it's valueless because you always have values. It's just that everyone would agree that a, a, a world with mass unemployment due to, frankly speaking, people just not being competent enough or smart enough to do what 
you know, an automated deep learning machine could do, that, that could be really problematic and it could cause, cause a lot of social uh, strife and all kinds of problems. Uh, but that, that type of topic isn't even on, on the table because people, well, you know. You, you know, I, I have this, uh, this idea that uh, <clears throat> if, if, if there's something that everyone agrees upon, uh, people won't talk about it and they'll ignore it if everyone agrees with it. Uh, it's the things that people disagree on that, you know, receive the most attention. So, you know, b because of that, you could have this looming disaster uh, that's coming up. But because everyone agrees, yeah, it's bad, it doesn't get any airtime and no one talks about it. Uh, so. Well, it's a bit like the, uh, you know, this, I, I think we spend a lot of time in modernity pretending we're not going to die because we, we, well, it's a convenient illusion and we generally don't deal with things we did in the past where uh, 500 years ago, I'm, I'm fairly certain it wasn't uncommon to see people dropping dead in the street. Um, and it probably would have taken a while uh, for the people to get the corpses out of there as well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, out of sight, out of mind, right? Uh, and, and I think, this is almost anticipating a video that I recorded today, but I, I think that, yeah, we, I don't disagree with that, that if contention seems to be the reason to discuss things at the same time, contention rarely uh, results in resolution, uh, in, as we can observe in, say, the uh, current phenomenon of internet blood sport. Um, all it is is a type of entertainment for people that choose sides and whoever w won or didn't win uh, so I think we're we're almost approaching uh, this is my own view a bottleneck in terms of our evolutionary history and we're paying attention to most mostly to the wrong things uh, but I, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to sw uh, switch our attention span quickly enough to uh, address some of these uh, problems, but uh, we'll see. I, I, I guess that you're concerned that the great filter is ahead of us as opposed to behind us. Uh, I Yeah, well, I, I think so because there are all kinds of reasons why that probably is the case. Uh, a, a former relative abundance of fossil fuels ready to be discovered, um, uh, levels of comfort and wealth that have never existed before which help which overall helped to insulate people from uh, from a view that is cautiously uh, aware of a, of a pro of problems in the future I mean if, if, if I was taking a walk today you know people were frolicking in the park and walking their dogs and playing tennis and it's all kumbaya uh, kumbaya motherfucker and it's all great and everyone's ha happy and um, none of this, whatever the, that state of mind they're in at the moment might be, it might not account for what things will be like in 30 years or 40 years. And so we're going to have to go beyond uh, what are, you could say, a normative, uh, what is a normative range of, of long-term planning and thinking about some of these issues. And oh man, I'm really spoil I'm going to, I can't really talk about this without spoiling the, uh, a video that I have to upload the video before this one, I guess. But um, needless to say, yeah, there, there, there are going to be problems in the future, and I, I find that the focus of our attention is, is largely misdirected, uh, and, and it, I, fi I think it's disastrous, actually. And, um, you know, it, it's why I just I, I can't align myself with any of these political uh, polls because I, don't, I see them just wasting time. Uh, I wish I could find somebody that I could say, yeah, let, let's push for this but everyone I see is is trying to push some political value induced vision uh, that I think misses the mark of the bigger picture but that's just my view of things uh, <clears throat> yeah I mean I, I guess uh, most of what people are uh, <laughs> day to day quabbling about on say social media isn't really impactful uh, or, the or the government. I mean, uh, I don't think mainstream politicians are really addressing some of these critical issues. They just want to get voted in again. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's uh, I I cannot disagree with that. That is pretty accurate. Um, yeah, basically, we're fucked. 
but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I can't really think of any. <laughs> based on the evidence I look at and the problems we're going to be facing in the next hundred years, I think we're fucked. Uh, and the you know the the left can blindly ignore all these real world issues and focus on their pretend utopias and. Uh, the right or the alt-right can say race is everything and you, you fix the race issue and everything will magically fall into place, but I don't buy either of those narratives. So uh, there's, not, there's not much wiggle room for uh, uh, people like me who uh, find themselves an outcast in the, the political landscape of uh, what I think is, is a very pernicious tendency to ignore what are, what are real, going to be soon, uh, the automation's a huge one that you were just talking about, real huge issues uh, to come. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very much despair-inducing, uh, whether you look at mainstream politics as conducted by politicians or uh, so-called Internet pundits who, who are really just trying to push an agenda uh, of their choosing or of their inclination, and uh, yeah, it's it's. I, I guess you can't really do much uh, other than do what you do. Uh, at least in your case, you have your your alcohol and your your uh, inclination to enjoy debates. Uh, I'm I don't really have that, so I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah lo- dro- dropping a lot of black pills here uh well i am sometimes called the lord of black pills but yeah i suppose so but uh, I, I don't do it because i i take joy in and i do it or i, I do it because I, I just don't i don't see any counter evidence that that worldview so yeah um i, I un- unfortunately yeah i uh I agree with you. So I, I guess just uh, for for anyone listening, there, there's this concept of of the great filter, uh, and it's it's essentially an explanation to the Fermi paradox, uh, which is that we don't, uh, you know, even though there are billions of suns out there, we see absolutely zero evidence for life, and so the the idea is that there must be a filter uh, somewhere that makes it so that life, generally speaking, doesn't. Uh, achieve interplanetary status and starts building Dyson spheres or you know mega colonies on on uh, like uh, worlds or something like that. So uh, <clears throat> so one idea is that uh, so like you could have like a filter that is just uh, you know the beginning of life. Like maybe just life itself is so rare, uh, and and th- that's why we don't see. Life That's not my own personal view of what the filter is, if I may. I think the filter in the context of the Fermi paradox. Well, I, I would concede that it's possible. I mean, there's, there's always well, no. Problem, I, I was I, I, I was just about to go through through a, a number of ideas of where the filter is. Well, um, okay, we could talk about. I I, I yeah. lean towards one idea myself. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'll, I'll just state mine, one that I tend to favor, and then you can go through the list if you want. But. Sure. I think that um, if you use, you know, the Kardashev scale, this sort of scale mm-hmm. of you know, energy, you know, so type one, two, and three, yeah, yeah, that there's something we have to kind of assume that most life forms probably, in as much as they've existed elsewhere in the universe, probably underwent similar uh, pressures that we would that we could describe as evolution, maybe with some slight differences, and with these pressures, you, you get organisms that suffer from all the cognitive weaknesses and 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 unawareness that we do and so they inevitably i mean they they hurtle forward they make progress um but because of their short-sightedness because the implica evolution does not provide um for the ability to engage in truly long-term planning Mm -hmm. um they never really reach the stage where they can produce an environment and a civilization that would shuttle them from type zero. I guess you could say we're sort of like a type 0. 0.5 or 6 maybe yeah. uh, to a, a, a 1. From my understand, somewhat limited understanding of, of how this model is proposed, if a civilization gets to type 1, it's much, much more probable that they will get to type 2 because at that stage, uh, you're 
you're not invincible, but something like a extinction event caused by an asteroid or uh, uh, a series of volcanic explosions that would otherwise wipe out wipe out massive uh, uh, amounts of life would be less terrifying because you would effectively control the volcano in a type one uh, civilization, at least on that one planet. Uh, so I, I think that if we're if life it, life forms are governed by evolutionary forces, that evolution itself is the greatest hindrance, and and so it just prevents us from getting there. But that's my view. Well, yeah, un unfortunately, um, I, I would probably have to agree with you here. Uh, so, um, yeah, as, as I was saying, the great filter could be uh, at just, you know, life starting. Uh, the great filter could be that, um, you know, there's lots of bacteria and prokaryotes uh, on all the planets, but uh, they don't become eukaryotic. Um, or perhaps, you know, on, on, the, on all the planets, there's lots of eukaryotic cells, but they don't become multicellular, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, there's lots of, of areas where, um, you know, life had to do something critical in order to get us to where we are now. Uh, and so, yeah, as, as you're saying, the great filter for life could be uh, the transition from a uh, type zero to, uh, you know, 0 0.5 civilization to a truly, you know, type one civilization uh and i am also uh kind of of the perspective that that may be uh what is happening i mean of course we don't know uh we have a data point of one in terms of you know life and civilizations uh but i think that especially when it comes to uh automation when it comes to uh the potential uh introduction of you know, like a super intelligent AI. Uh, I think that we're we're playing with with fire, uh, maybe even worse than fire, like a thermonuclear weapon. And uh, yeah, it, it it seems like a lot of bad things could happen. Uh, and yeah, perhaps that great filter is ahead of us. Yeah, and I think, like I said, we're a bunch of stupid apes at the end of the day. Uh, I think to to get to type one to get past at least the that that great filter we we'd essentially have to be something that we're not i mean i was just watching uh something that somebody posted uh earlier a bunch of people morons in a car playing with guns and some and the guy's girlfriend just shot she shot him in the head i mean probably not a good idea to play around with a loaded nine millimeter you would think right <laughs> but you know, some people don't think that I, things like that lead to despair. But it, it might be that it's it's it, yeah, that that is long term hopeless. But then again, hopeless as it might be, uh, I, I I if there's anything that I feel some uh, inkling of passion for, it is for trying to get us past this potential filter or bottleneck. Um, and uh, the things we're doing now, I can, I'm pretty sure, are not, not helping us very much. Uh, definitely not, because uh, it, it, we're just very much living in the now. We're not focusing on uh, some of the, well, some of the things we're talking about. I suppose you know you could just revel in the day and the today and and uh, what have you. But uh, maybe I'm a bit of a worrier. I, I find it difficult to just enjoy uh, this day and think nothing of the tomorrow uh, so yeah yeah um, maybe maybe complexity science is a, a partial solution long term I don't I don't really know I just know that there there there's gonna be a slew of problems down the line that we are largely ignoring instead focusing on our uh, petty politics and uh, yeah, what what can you do about that? Uh, it seems uh, that's what animates people more. So, well, um, <clears throat> you know, to uh, try to put a potential optimistic viewpoint here, uh, it it is also possible again because we're dealing with a a, a data a data uh, point of of one. Uh, it is possible that the great filter is behind us, uh, and that uh, what whatever. Uh, problem uh, that you know that comes from the Fermi paradox, uh, you know wh whatever that thing is, uh, we somehow at some point in life history uh, managed to get through, and perhaps 
uh, you know, from here out, it's uh, yeah. Just, but uh, probabilistically speaking, I mean, it, it, it. Sure, we have a data point of one, but if you just look at the evidence, it doesn't suggest that we're going to make it out of this, uh, or certainly not get off the planet. It looks like we will be one of the. 99.9% .9 of species that, that, that have existed that will uh, go extinct. And sadly, I think, with the go extinct with the small potential of having been able or having been in a position to possibly avert that uh, extinction, which makes our forthcoming annihilation uh, all the more uh, tragic, I would say. But, um, yeah. Um, I, I uh, thinking, Abe, I, I, I would be more than happy to uh, just uh, start a political party uh, that 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 where its its sole its sole purpose was to get off uh, the planet. Yeah. I, I I would support that political party. There was a uh, yeah, there was a a platform in New York City. The rent is too damn high. Something like get off the <laughs> fucking planet party. Something like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd get behind that one. That would be that'd be useful, um, but. I think that again, people are just too uh, short-sighted. The irony is that the thing, the things that seem to motivate people the most, <clears throat> when people had the the greatest uh, interest, you could say, or, or propulsion, no pun intended, towards these things, was when there was the existential threat offered by uh, a, nu a nuclear uh, holocaust or, or mutually yeah. mad. I mean, it seems that those types of threats uh, animate us uh, much more than the almost absolute levels of comfort we experience today where you can pretty much just chill out and enjoy the good life uh so I, I don't know a lot of people have suggested that what we i don't like to use the word need but what we quote unquote need is a good war um and maybe that's true oh um, yeah i i uh, i agree with that uh as i guess as as dark as that sounds i think that yeah i think a cold war the sequel uh, might actually, in the long term, be quite beneficial for humanity. Uh, it, it might uh, get us to, say, uh, put a base on Mars or something like that. Uh, I mean, it, it could, it would probably result in a lot of people dying, uh, which is not good, obviously. But uh, you know, just looking at it in the long term, from kind of a dispassionate point of view, yeah, a, a second Cold War may actually be good. Yeah, although I have my doubts as to how plausible that is, because I think the internet was a huge game changer, and, uh, well, I don't want to get into that, but I think that it's unlikely. So I think uh, the most likely scenario is that we will keep continue drifting forward with uh, minimal progress. You know, we'll get the Mi phone, sorry, iPhone, you know, 2000, version 2000.716, and every year there'll be some upgrade, and you'll get, you know, slightly better CPUs and slightly better GPUs and that. And people will just continue living in their comfort and something really bad will happen, be it mass automation and or something just beyond our control because, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're we not equipped to deal with uh, something that could cause a mass extinction event. Uh, we're not even close to equipped to deal with that. So, yeah, I think that uh, maybe the maxim uh, to offer here is uh, I'm trying to pa paraphrase I'm drink and be merry uh, now for tomorrow you must die something like that <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah that's uh, it's, uh, I, I guess that the uh, the nickname of, of Lord of the Black Pills or whatever you said is quite quite apt for you well I, I don't I don't take joy in being a dispenser of black pills despite what people say it's just that i try to um base my observations off of the evidence i have available i might be of course i'm just human and correct but i i don't i don't really see too many ways forward given the current trajectories that we're on as a species or as in, or as groups of people so the only conclusion i can reach then is is a quote-unquote black pill conclusion um, you know, I, I think the worst thing you can do is, uh, is, is fatuously blow smoke up people's asses and instill a message of hope where there is no hope. 
Uh, I think that's very dangerous uh, because for hope to function, you need uh, the hope to have the potential of, of well, it needs to be actionable. And uh, as long as we're on the wrong course, and I can't claim to know exactly what the right course is, I don't think we have the, the information, which is part of the problem, but some things I think are definitely the wrong course. And I think the, the eternal battle between the left and the right and the crap, the, on, the crap that's been going on for the last couple of years definitely is not the right way forward. So, uh, you know, what else can I do but dispense black pills? Well, you know, I, I, I've, I've put a little bit of thought towards this. So um, my, my, my personal thinking is that uh, it's, it's going to be a super intelligent AI that uh, murders humanity. Uh, you know, not necessarily intentionally, but, you know, it's going to make us go obsolete. Uh, it's going to, you know, we'll, somehow we're going to end up dying to a super intelligent AI. I think that if anything is going to wipe out humanity, that's going to be the thing. Um, but the other part of that is that uh, I would assume, and, you know, again, I could be wrong here because I'm talking about something that doesn't yet exist, but I would assume that a super intelligent AI uh, would have the desire uh, to replicate itself. Uh, and I would also assume that it would have the means to get off the planet. Uh, and, you know, perhaps it would be better uh, it, it, it would almost certainly be better at, say, colonizing worlds, setting up Dyson spheres, uh, creating, like, megastructures mm -hmm. uh, than, than humans would ever be because, you know, it can survive in the vacuum of space. It doesn't need, uh, you know, food and water and air to survive. Uh, and yet we actually don't see uh, any evidence of this when we, you know, just look out to the stars. Uh, so to me, I mean... There is no evidence of a super intelligent AI colonizing the galaxy, uh, and my belief is that that again, that's the most likely thing to be the great filter if it is ahead of us. So, uh, you know, just from what we can observe, perhaps uh, we won't actually end up dying. Um, perhaps uh, the great filter was behind us because again, if the great filter is ahead of us, we would potentially see evidence of this at least if it's going to be the super intelligent ai that is the great filter yeah that's true um well in the term i mean if you wanted to take a positive slant on things and most of the universe is unexplored i mean we we, <clears throat> we have access to a, a vanishingly small uh you say quadrant uh, of, of the universe um and it, well we're we're kind of on the clock as uh, uh, with uh, the uh, well with 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 uh, cosmic inflation and things like that. Uh, I, I don't really yeah I don't think anyone knows uh, exactly, but it's it's left to I mean we just can guess and speculate. But the fact that we're not even on the level of civilization invested in this question seems uh, pretty problematic to me. Instead, we want to argue um, whether or not some professor is a racist or um, whether or not um, blacks have some percentage higher on average of cortisol production or whatever. I, I, yeah, that's, that's, we're not, again, we're not looking at the things that, that do matter uh, in the long run, I think at least, so. It's, uh, like I said, at least you have your drink. <laughs> um, well, I mean, but, but to, to maybe press it a bit further, um, because I'm kind of interested in the, I mean, do you, ha besides a super intelligent AI wiping out humanity, um, what do you think could wipe us out? Do you think it's going to be thermonuclear war or... Um, uh, well, there are a lot of potential uh, things. Uh, maybe uh, resource deprivation and an inab inability to extract and or create new uh, equivalent forms of those resources. That could be one thing, which will then lead, of course, to resource competition, which will reinforce primitive tribalism of all sorts and uh, the whole rigmarole there. That's one thing, one possibility. Uh... Extinction events, uh, there have been a number on the Earth. Uh, the biggest one was the Permian-Triassic, mm -hmm. uh, where basically almost everything died. 
and the only reason we're here is these sort of uh, reptile, mammal-like things survive, which because uh, uh, they replaced a lot of the stuff that didn't. Uh, so that that could occur for all kinds of you know reasons. It could be an asteroid collision. Um, there could be a series of volcanic explosions, which could uh, significantly raise uh, the temperature of the world. And every time there historic prehistorically rather has been this type of event, we're, we're talking millennia of, of we're talking you know, huge increases, like average increases of, of ten Celsius or something like that. Um, which then results has all kinds of well going back to the Permian Triassic that was um, the uh, ocean became overly oxidated with there so that you know there are problems with that so extinction events resource competition um, the best case scenario is not even a best case scenario it's just that we, we get somehow we 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 manage to soldier on on this fucking mud ball and we just never figure out how to get off of it and of course we're on the clock with uh, the sun just uh, running out of juice and we so got I, I think we have about one point what 1.8 billion years before the yeah, sun yeah but, so, but that's even the best yeah I, I know but I'm just saying that if we never assuming if we just st somehow stay in a relative uh, state of kind of static progression then that too uh, becomes a problem, right? And uh, and th and then I mean, I mean, now we're really stretching it. But uh, long, the longest term possible, I, I you know, I'm, I'm stretching the the limits of my knowledge of cosmology. But the heat death of the universe doesn't bode well for really <laughs> any uh, any creature uh, at the moment. But more short term, because that's who know that's billions and billions of years in the future. Um, I would say that uh, resource deprivation and extinction events are uh, probably the the biggest issues, as well as the squandering. Uh, well, this is kind of part of that squandering resources that we have available now. Um, you know, I, I think yeah, those are probably the things that I'm I'm uh, most concerned about. Uh, we, we seem to be really good at just repeating mistakes we, we've made many times in, in, in the past. So uh, maybe maybe we'll fight a war and somebody by accident will lose a couple of nukes and and uh, who knows? I, I don't know, but I, I I don't have this Whig view of history that that uh, and I understand why people thought that way uh, in the '90s and and what have you and. I understand why people think things are fine now, but because um, I know it's easy to get lost in a world of video games and inane Discord conversations and think that everything is fine. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway. Well, um, you 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 do have to acknowledge, I guess, the time scales that we're working with. Um, so. Uh, Let's see. the The Earth is like four point five billion years old, uh, and I think life started pretty pretty soon after that. Uh, so and about then a billion years, I think, to get microbes. Yeah, something like that. I no, I, I think that in terms of like single celled life, uh, it was it was pretty soon after uh, water uh, was able to be in a liquid state on the planet when the planet cooled down enough. It was it was pretty soon after that, as far as my knowledge takes me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you got, uh, I think, eukaryotes like uh, two billion years ago, and then you got uh, multicellular, multicellular life um, not too long after that, maybe a few hundred million years. And then, you know, uh, the Cambrian explosion was only like uh, 500 million years ago. And that's yeah, really... Something uh, like that, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's really all of like, th that's really all of life as as you know we conceptualize it. You know all the uh, organisms that you know are, are multicellular, like complex animals. You know beyond like a jellyfish or a sponge. Uh, you know you you got that only five hundred million years ago when you're talking about you know four billion years of of life history, uh, and then you know from there it's it's kind of exploded you know you can kind of think of it as like just an exponential curve you know like uh, y equals x squared kind of graph uh 
and, and then you know when when you get to the humans, you know, uh, early hominids uh, appeared um, a few hundred thousand years ago. We you know, and then you know, after a while, we we developed uh, agriculture. Like I don't know, ten, twelve thousand years ago, uh, we developed writing, uh, and and you know, it, it just seems like the amount of time to the next big epoch, you know, the next big thing is actually it's shortening with you know uh, it's shortening in time uh, with with each big step, and uh, and so mm-hmm. so you know from from my perspective, I mean, uh, it it seems like like uh, we're in a very special time right now. We're not just another organism on this planet struggling to survive you know 99.999 percent of all organisms have gone extinct i mean that's true but i mean it it seems to me as though uh humans are a very special case i mean we've developed society technology this could be the end of us but you know we we can't think of ourselves as just you know any other species well we're not any other species and i think that's the tragedy is that there's there's a the fact that we can have talk about this and even think about a potential of achieving what I like to call escape velocity is something that, that you know makes us different from cats or toads or you know stomach worms or whatever. Sure, uh, I and you know, the, the picture you painted would be one that initially you could, you could claim is an optimistic picture. However. Um, as the stakes uh, grow, it's not enough just to survive and reproduce. We need to, you know, push the envelope. Then uh, the challenges uh, accordingly grow uh, in turn. And um, I think, again, we're talking about war. I mean, yes, we see the emer- we've seen the emergence of these. We call them incredible technologies. But how useful is the me phone? version 3.7019 for the future so yeah i i I think it it, you could look at it and say well you know we're we're on a roll now and maybe it's we'll we'll figure it out it's just that as as the stakes get higher and, and it's not just about surviving and and reproducing i mean it is kind of just about that but there there are more there are more elements than just that then um, it becomes uh, very difficult to be uh, optimistic just because we we managed to make our way uh, to here. Because I mean, let, let's be honest, we're tra- talking about probabilities. Um, we got really, really lucky. Um, there's no reason to believe that our luck is going to uh, maintain itself in the future. Um, it could have been that uh, you know multicellular life never developed or primates never came we just don't know what's going to happen uh i think it's rather than to twiddle our thumbs and be hopeful of some future that may never arrive we should uh, cautiously approach the future and and try to take measures that will at least increase the probability of our survival and and our advancement that's my view at least yeah and i certainly can't disagree with that anything that uh, ensures the survival of humanity, I would absolutely get behind. Indeed. Well, uh, it's pretty late here, um, but we had a pretty good conversation. Uh, I, uh, you know, you're uh, going to start your day and enjoy your drink. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm going to be going to bed in the not too distant future, I think. I'm a bit uh, tired. But, uh, yeah, we didn't talk too much about uh, complexity science but i think people <laughs> no, got, the, <laughs> got the gist of uh of what complexity science is it's something that will definitely be a a new model for the future and uh i can only uh rather ignorantly hope that all of my predictions are are, are wrong i hope i'm wrong and i hope that what i perceive to be in name political uh, squabbles and disputes that are ongoing now actually have some productive uh, outcome. Uh, I really don't think that's the case, but maybe I'm wrong. So I guess we'll see. But uh, thank, I will thank General Chief, the, uh, the based dude, uh, for joining me. And uh, yeah, I will uh, check you guys out in the future if I'm still alive. Hell, if humanity is still alive. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe.
And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.